Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the CDL Podcast channel. In this episode today, we're going to be talking pretty much all Black Ops 6 news, and then we are going to be diving into a map tier list. Brock and I are going to be going over all the maps that we have played so far in pubs, including, I guess, the four little tiny maps. Maybe we'll talk about those a bit, but if you guys enjoy this one, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on the audio platforms, drop a follow, drop a five-star review. Probably going to be a shorter episode today as it's, you know, just just talking about the new game and seeing our thoughts on it. We were both able to play at least a little bit. Um, so let's jump right into this one. Brock, how are you doing today? Oh, you know, doing pretty good in this fine, fine Monday, you know. Finally got to play Call of Duty this weekend. I don't, you know, I just, honestly, let's just dive into it. It was, uh, I'm happy. I can say that. I'm definitely happy with uh, with the release, I think, overall. Um. Uh, good i mean there are definitely some negatives to talk about as with any release but i'm overall feeling good about the cdl year feeling good about the game i definitely it's definitely more fun uh there are a lot of good base things in the game as compared to a lot of our you know most recent titles Mm -hmm. i definitely see some of the online talk about the maps and stuff and we'll get into that in a little bit but I, i will say overall i feel pretty good about the game yeah uh for me i'm kind of with you overall pretty good I feel like I already like uh, this game. I already like this pubs more than last year, definitely. Mm-hmm. And that's already not even a week in, into the game. <laughs> yeah, we're, what, three, four days into playing the game. And, uh, I mean, you can tell pretty early on, especially as people that have, I mean, we've been playing Call of Duty for, dude, like, like 15 plus years at this point, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, to different degrees each year. Maybe one year we play a lot. Maybe one year we don't play as much, you know, whatever. But, We've basically been playing essentially on and off for like 15 years. So like we have a pretty good feel, I think. Like, you know, some people you can take with a grain of salt that there's somebody that just hops on COD for, you know, the one month when the game comes out every year and then they like determine, oh, like I love this game. They always say they love the game. I hate this game. It's like those people are maybe a little bit harder to deal with. Like with us, it's like we've played COD so much that we can kind of tell how we're going to feel about a game Yep, pretty quickly. Like I would say in the CDL era, I'm W19. I knew right away that I was not a fan. Same here. <laughs> uh, I knew that I wasn't a fan at all. Cold War, I felt right when I played Cold War, I was like, pubs wise, I don't know. It's not the worst, but I'm not like loving it. But I could tell right away that competitive wise, I was going to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, going to Vanguard, I thought pubs wise, once again, not very good. But I could tell with like the fast pace, I think I was thinking I might enjoy competitive because there were just a lot of engagements to be had. And I, I think I was right there. I, I did end up enjoying competitive, even though objectively the game wasn't that good. And then MW2 right away could tell, yeah, not really uh, feeling this game pubs wise. Uh, mm-hmm. But competitive, I'm not sure about it either. And I ended up being right. That game is one of my least favorite in the most recent years. And then obviously MW3. Once again, pubs wise, definitely a step up over MW two and probably Vanguard as well, but still yep. not the best. But I could tell competitive wise, it's going to be one of the more enjoyable titles over the past three or four years before it. So this year, I feel very optimistic. I think it's definitely the best pubs we've had probably since like Black Ops four, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I would say so because I'm trying to think how much Cold War pubs I played. I think I played a decent amount, but it's just like it, the- it was all right. <laughs> It's like for me, I want like for pubs, I want the fast paced like movement games where I can just like fly around and go for a ton of engagements. Cause like the way I play pubs, I'm not trying to get like crazy KD where I'm just playing super hard for kills. I'm just like running around for engagements. That's the way I play pubs. Like yep. I'm not trying to go like 80 and 10. I'm trying to go like 160 or something like just crazy engagements, like 150, like just a ridiculous amount of engagements. That's what I'm going for. I'm not going for like a nuke. I'm just running around like popping as many streaks as I can. Uh yep. you know, just just doing that. So like I'm not really going for like the crazy, crazy kill streaks and all that. So like I I for me I want a fast paced pubs, which is why like my favorite pubs uh in the more modern era. Like obviously I love like BO2 and that's just a different story. But like I loved uh like BO3 pubs and how fast they could be and like the crazy like variability with like specialists, the crazy plays could be never ending and streaks and all that. The streaks are good in the game. Uh, I will say that's one thing I'm missing in this game as compared to, you know, some of the better games. Is I don't, maybe I haven't used the right ones yet, but I don't feel like there's like super rewarding streaks that I've noticed at least yet. Yeah. At least from the ones that I've used, I've really only used the, like the counter UV, UV and stuff like that to get more score. 
Yeah, like, and those are like, yeah, it's fun. Like, I can get another streak, but like, then after that, I've been using like the little like Overwatch Hilo, which is honestly kind of useless because everybody's doing launchers. So you put out that Overwatch Hilo, you get like a kill or two, and then it just gets shot down. If that, <laughs> yeah, if you even get a kill or two, that's that's true. Um, yeah, but I I don't know. Like the streak so far, I haven't been like over overly rewarding. Maybe I haven't used the right ones yet because I'm I'm like a level forty something or something like that. Like I haven't. I was able to play a little bit, you know, here and there this weekend, but not like a grind grind session where I'm like prestige one or prestige two. Uh, obviously, yeah. like every year, I pretty much go for dark matter as long as the game isn't like terrible, terrible. Like MW two, I definitely didn't get it. I just waited for rank to come out. Uh, last yeah. year, I got uh, MW three was pretty fun. I got dark matter last year. Um, and I'm obviously going for it this year. I, I like the grind this year, so I'm going for that. But yeah, I'm kind of missing the rewarding streaks, and maybe I haven't used the right ones yet. Because, like I said, I haven't really gotten to explore fully everything in the game. I started doing ARs. I have like four ARs, gold, and they're they're pretty good overall. Every AR I've used is pretty good. Everybody loves the AK-47, from what I've seen. I'm not a big fan. Yeah, I can agree. It's for me when I was in that thing, I just felt like I was shooting enough bullets half the time out of that thing. Yeah, the XM4 is like really, really, really good. Yeah. Um. But other than that, I yeah, I like, I like the movement definitely. Movement's very fun. Like, I don't find like the omni movement thing to be like crazy op. Like, the side dives and stuff are like fun, but also there is like a flukiness to them that like it's a, definitely a skill gap. Like, only like very high skill gap players are able to you know make moves off that. Mm-hmm. Like at a pubs level, like your pros obviously are going to be able to like make insane plays, which is why I think it's going to be really fun. Like I think like Shotzi could make some insane plays like, oh, yeah, that have us baffled and will be like very fun to watch. And I think that could be exciting. Uh, but I think in terms of like pubs, I don't think it's like a crazy thing. Like a lot of people barely even use it anyways. I find myself like not even like fully used to it yet. So I'm not really like using it all the time, you know? Yeah. Mm hmm. For for me, when I crouch, when I sometimes when I crouch, I, I, for whatever reason, I hold down, I hold like the left stick down, and I just fly backwards. <laughs> yeah, I took that off. So mine, I put it on tap. To, everybody was saying to play on hybrid, but in order to dive, then you have to hold down the left stick, and that feels like incredibly weird to me. Yeah. So I put myself on uh, tap to slide. So then it it makes more sense in my head. Like I don't have to think about holding down like the left stick in order to dive. Because uh, obviously both of us play on controller, so like when I put I play on tap to slide, so it's like a lot easier in my head. It's like every time I tap, I'll slide. Every time I hold it, I'll dive. It's like just mm-hmm. like way easier to manage in my head. So I play on that. Yep. Even though a lot of people recommend to play on hybrid, I think it's it's better to play on tap to slide. Yeah, I guess it, it's in the, at the end of the day, it's all personal preference. Oh yeah, I mean there are probably people out there that play like they probably shoot with the A button or something. Like I don't even. Oh, uh, I'm sure. Out there. <laughs> I'm sure there is ever something like that, you know. I, I don't doubt it. Like I know you're probably like technically, according to a lot of pros, supposed to play flipped, but it's like one of those things. Like when I feel like everybody, when you're like a complete bot when you first start playing, you definitely play with controller vibration on because like that's how yep. you know video games. Just that's what I did. And then eventually, I think in like Bo3, like one of our friends was like, "Turn vibration off." Like you should have that off. So then I turned it off, and at first I was like, "I can't do it." Like. Because it feels so weird after playing years with vibration on, and like most video games, whatever controller you have, the the controller vibrates when things happen. Yep. So like I, I couldn't do it for a while, then I got used to it. Now I can't imagine playing with vibration on. It's like one of the first things I turn off. Um, just mm-hmm. like it, random things like that. Like and a lot of people say to play on flipped. Like we have friends that play on flipped. I don't know. Do you play on flipped? I do not play on flipped. I can't play on flipped because I like tried it like once, but I and I know I think it's technically better. Like a lot of pros say it's better than playing on like regular, but like. It's one of those things that, like, I know if I just, like, one weekend just, like, grinded and switched and got used to it, it probably would end up being better for me. But I just, like, can't get past it in my head because if I try it for, like, a couple of lives, it just feels so weird that I'm like, nope, I'm going back. Yeah, it's just too different too soon. And I, at this point, I'm I'm too set in my ways. I'll probably never change. Yeah. Same here. I mean, I mean, you know, I guess, you know, do you really need flipped if you have, like, a leak controller and stuff? Like, I don't know. Uh, I don't really... I think, yeah, I guess flip might be more like originally for like claw to bring to see your hands closer together, but yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, anyways, in terms of the game, guns wise, it's hard for me to say like, oh, these are the best guns, this is the best meta because I've had a weird roll, like a weird road for it. Obviously, like, you know, game came out Thursday night, I played a bunch, I was just going for gold AR. So I used like the first four ARs, like the XM, the, what is it, like the AIMS? 
uh, the AK-47. And then the fourth one, which I can't remember what it was. It's like starts with a C, I think. Uh, isn't it like GP, GPR or something? That might be it. I've used the first four ARs you unlock, and I, I honestly, they were all like pretty good. Even the AK. I just don't usually like using like AK type guns, but all the guns were good. Uh, I haven't used any subs because I initially started going for ARs, and then I was like, wait, the the launchers apparently like the camo challenges were easier to do right now, like they were counting more. So I started just use, running around with a launcher. Yeah, the past few days just trying to get those done, and then I started on one of the shotguns. Just like I kind of decided this year, maybe I want to do all the annoying stuff like shotguns, pistols, knives, launchers first. So that way, at the end, I'm just doing like LMGs, ARs, subs, and just like able to like roll through and just like slay mm-hmm. uh, yeah. with those on like Nuketown or something. Mm, but not a, not a bad idea. It's hard for yeah, it's hard for me to rank guns though, because like like I said, I haven't used a lot of them, but it seems like. From what I've used of the ARs, they're all pretty good. I've heard some people complaining about subs, but I know there's that one sub that's like a three bullet kill. Yeah, that I haven't died, used that one yet. Yeah, I've, I've been killed by it because I thought it was like a glitch at first. I got killed by it and it popped up and you know how it says like, oh, this person killed you with this gun, this many hits and they did this much damage or whatever. And it, it kept popping up like uh, after the first time I saw it, I was like, is that right? And then it just kept popping up like this person kills you with this gun, three bullets and it's a submachine gun. And I'm like, damn, that thing is good. Yeah, that would probably get nerfed in the next coming patch. Probably it shoots pretty slow, I think, though, doesn't it? From what I remember, I think it does, yeah. So who knows if they do anything to it? Yeah. And then there's also people like Race to Prestige. There was a dude who has dark matter already. He got it like that dull shit. fast, but apparently he like boosted or something. What I saw, like it wasn't legit. Yeah, but if that was he got that within like two days, that's like I don't think that's even like sure it might be possible. That's like everything has to everything has to go right. Yeah, but still like, insane. Yeah, that it, it's like yeah, everything has to go right. You like maybe boosted that Reed Boy guy. I think when when I saw this morning, he had like uh, like the spine camo done. So I'm assuming he probably has dark matter at this point. I think like I saw somebody like the Carnage Clan got it. I know there's obviously race to prestige is going on. I don't know if anybody's hit master prestige yet, but like obviously like optics doing their race to master prestige stream, but they're not really doing like the actual like legit race. Yeah, like actually trying to finish first, they're more just obviously doing it for content and entertainment purposes. Because like I think like the Doom Clan and whatever are like actually doing it the way they do. It doesn't even seem fun. They like always are like playing like hardcore because it like skips medals and like skips kill cams and all that. So it's technically like the fastest way to level up and you get kills the fastest. I'm pretty sure they just play hardcore and that's just like I don't know. It doesn't seem nearly as fun. I know the purpose of it is to try to get Prestige Master first, but eh, it doesn't seem nearly as fun as the way Optics doing it. Yeah, definitely. If you just play hardcore that many times, I mean, hardcore a little bit, it's, it's okay. But if you just play it every time, it's just after a while, it doesn't get funky. You're just like spawning, get killer with through a wall and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I it's yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a hardcore fan. The only time I play hardcore is if it's like way easier for guns. So like I'll probably play hardcore this year for pistols, just because like the pistol head jobs are so much easier in hardcore. Mm-hmm. Uh Oh, yeah, but I guess last thing we can mention, I, I've seen some people like saying they, you know, dislike the camo grind this year, the way it's set up. Some people like the old ways. Obviously, that's fully up to personal preference. Like, yep. it, you may not like it this way. Some people may like it. Personally, I like it. Uh, like some people were saying this way takes way too long. I don't know. For me, it's not that hard because it's like both of us are pretty good that like in pubs, I don't struggle to get kills. Like I pull up the ARs, I'm getting like 15 plus headshots a game. Mm-hmm. like 10 to 15 plus headshots i pulled out a shotgun the other day and i got like 21 in one game with it like overall i get headshots pretty quick and then the challenges after are like insanely easy like 30 kills while moving or whatever and like 30 kills shortly after sprinting i get those in one game like the, the overall the i think the camel grind is better this year i've seen some people saying they like 100 headshots is way too much you have to get you know 3300 headshots uh Based on the 33 guns, I guess technically it's less because you know, like the knife and yeah, the knives, like the melee weapons, you don't have to get headshots for those, obviously. But so then in that case, probably 3,100 headshots, a lot of headshots, obviously, it's a lot, but like, I don't know. I think the grind to me maybe is a little easier than years past, but maybe not. It's just like it, I just hated the fact that I had to level up guns all the way. Yeah, it's, I did not like that. I was a fan of that at all. And like, I hate doing like long shots for every gun, like having to like go to a spot of the map and like sit there and stare down an alley to like know that that was like the range for a long shot and sit there and just try to get them. And like, I don't know. I just hated that. 
That's just because you had to do like long shots or pistols. So that required me to play like hardcore because like long shots with a pistol and core is so impossible. Because if they hit them with so many bullets, there you're probably not going to kill them by the time they run away. Yeah, and the damage fall off from that range. You go luck in the kill. Yeah. So I mean, if you're not a fan of the camo grind, that's completely okay. Obviously, that's personal preference. For me, I prefer it this way. The non-leveling of weapons. Uh I like I, I do I will say like I, I feel like snipers and shotguns should be one shot kills instead of headshots. Maybe. At least like for snipers, ranges. that's yeah. Yeah, that's true. Maybe snipers because snipers is like I mean snipers are probably overall harder to use than shotguns. Shotguns mm-hmm. you kind of just run and hit your shots like randomly, whatever, hip fire and you're good. Snipers actually take like a little more skill to use. So I could see snipers being just like a hundred one shots because that's usually what they are. Yeah. But not a huge not- fan of snipers being headshots but you know what it is was it is what it is i'll still be trying to go for dark matter uh yep more to the grind so brock one thing i i did hear though in terms of like my dark matter grind is i heard skump saying on like the optic podcast like last thursday that he believes like he may have heard that like ranked is coming out with the drop of season one which is november 14th uh but i had heard i thought like originally that it was going to be like partway through like the mid-season update for season one season one which would probably put it more into like early to mid-december yeah so the dark matter grind is going to get very interesting for me if ranked play comes out on the 14th because i doubt i'm going to finish dark matter before the 14th who knows but i doubt it uh and like when ranked play comes out i'm going to definitely be way more motivated to want to play ranked play rather than pubs even though i really i mean dark matter is not necessarily like for the camo like i use it in ranked a lot like i'll end up using it throughout the year probably but it's more just for the fact that I don't know. It's like it's like something fun to grind for. It's fun to get it like each year. Yep. It's like a fun accomplishment to go for. It's just like more for the grind and the fun of it. Yeah, it feels something, accomplished when you get it done. Something to go for when you know you're just sick and tired. Just you know, sure you can play pause, but at what point if you're not doing a camel challenge, it, it kind of gets boring. Yeah, I mean, if you're a person that's like new to COD or something, you may just enjoy the pubs aspect. Yeah, but like for us when we've been playing for so long, I mean, at least for me, I don't want to speak for you, but for me, it's like when I play pubs at this point, it's like. I played so many COD pubs in my life that like I basically just like when I play COD, I just enjoy playing ranked. And if you enjoy playing pubs, that's great. More power to you. But for me, it's just like at this stage of me playing COD, I enjoy watching the CDL, watching competitive uh, and playing ranked play. And I enjoy camel grinding at pubs. I don't really like like I can't sit down like anymore and like just play five hours of pubs, just pub stomping like. Yeah, that is really fun. Like it's not really for me. I got to be I got to be camel grinding, although I will say. If there were ever a year, Brock, I think that's another reason. We should talk about this before we do the maps. Uh, that's a reason I've been more motivated to play this game, too, and just, like, enjoying pubs is the prestige. The classic yep. prestige being back is a lot better. Like, so sa- Yep, so satisfying. Watch I'm actually up. seeing myself level up, and I'm, like, you know, I'm getting into the 40s now, and I'm kind of, like, I'm, like, actually feeling, like, excited to level up. I'm, like, oh, I can prestige soon. Like, you mm-hmm. know, within the next few days here, I might be prestige one. Like, I'll hopefully, you know, if I have time to play, I'll be prestige one. And it's, like, I'm actually excited to level up again where, like, Literally, this is the first time I'm excited to level up since, yeah, literally Black Ops 4. Like, that's been so long. Like, I'm actually, and I, do you feel the same way about that? Like, it, when yeah. you see your level go up, it's actually like, okay, like, yes, I'm going to get, because, like, I'd be disappointed in myself if I don't get uh, Prestige Master in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely excited for that. So, um, and if, it, like you said, if rank do, it does come out November 14th, yeah, I don't know if I'm getting Dark Matter, that's for sure. Yeah, I'd, it's going to be tough because you're going to have to put aside a lot of time to play pubs while ranked is out, which is a lot different. Yeah, man. I, and we both would rather just play ranked all day. Yeah. 100% I'd rather be playing, uh, rather be playing ranked all day. But I'm overall very happy. Obviously, there's a lot of complaints with the maps, which we're going to talk about here when we rank them uh, so far from what we've seen. Oh, man, I, I will say, though, I'm really loving the gunplay. I'm really loving the movement. I'm really loving the prestige system. I'm liking like I'm enjoying like we've been playing with our group of friends. I'm enjoying playing a lot like it is. It's definitely like I would say overall the vibes of playing this game. Are just better. Mm-hmm. Like everybody, all of our friends, like we're all enjoying it more. We're all having a lot more fun. Like th- th- this is just objectively a better call to be than the product we've seen in terms of like multiplayer for quite some time. Yep, fully agree. All right, now, Brock, let's talk about these maps. Uh, the maps have been getting some flack. A lot of people online have been saying this is the worst Treyarch map set we've ever seen off launch of a game, which is probably true. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, BO1, in my opinion, had some awesome maps. BO2 has some all-time classic maps. BO3 has some great maps. 
BO4 was probably starting to, you know, fall off from the great map design, but BO4 had some, some very good maps as well. Um, Cold War, I think, definitely was the worst Black Ops designed maps overall, worst BO4 took a step down, then this year might be worse. However, I don't think they're, like, as bad as people are saying. Like, there are a few maps, at least, that I'm like, I can see this being good and competitive. You know, it's not a bad pubs map, but, like, I can definitely see where some of the hate is coming from. Yeah. So, looking at it, I guess it's tough, because, like, I don't want to rank these in terms of compared to other Call of Duty maps, because obviously, like, then, like, nothing probably has a chance to hit S tier. Yeah. I guess we're just... So, like, the disclaimer for, like, all of a sudden, if you guys see we have, like, some random map in S tier that you're like, how is that an S tier map? We're going to be ranking these solely based on their placement within Black Ops 6. Not comparing them to, like, any of the maps, because obviously, like, this was a, you know, like, all-encompassing list of COD history. There's probably no S tier maps in here, because, like, obviously, there are so many good maps in history that would, like, trump these ones, but... Like for our sake, we're going to be doing just the maps within Black Ops Six. So like, if it's an S tier map within Black Ops Six, it's going to go in S tier. You know, something like that. Like, it's not being compared to like BO Two because obviously I would think none of these are S tier. But Brock, we're starting out. The first map that's listed here is Payback. And do we want to rank these? I don't know. We talked about both, but do we want to rank these as like how we're enjoying playing them as pubs? I think we should we should rank them in terms of pubs and we can talk about maybe like their competitive viability, but let's just strictly mm-hmm. rank them on playing like playing pubs on them. Okay. Maybe maybe factor in competitive viability a little bit, but mostly how they feel right now on pubs. So first one is payback. I know I know your thoughts on this map and you know my thoughts on this map, but what do you what do you think of payback? Payback? Oh I I really like payback is how it plays. You know, there is there's some little bit of long range sites, but overall, it's fast paced, small corridors, small areas. I just love the map so much compared to all the other ones. Yeah, I I agree. I think Payback is one of the best in this game. Uh, I think it feels it's a little small, maybe, but I don't think so. I I think it feels pretty competitively like I. I'm not sure about control. Control is the hardest one for me to imagine always because I can always imagine like, you know, you can put a bomb site here, you can put a bomb site there. Yeah. Offense spawns over here, defense spawns over here. It's easier for me to imagine search to destroy and it's easy for me to imagine hard point because like we can play that that mode like in pubs we played a lot. And it's like, oh, P1's here, P2's here, P3's here. Like I can kind of imagine that. However, control is a little harder for me to imagine because I'm not like as used to it. I'm not as, as used to where they put the points and everything. I think payback is one of the best maps in the game my my thing i'm battling with brock is i think it might be my favorite map in the game and it's really good for pubs and i think it's really competitively viable i just don't mm-hmm. know if there's a single map in this game that i would consider s tier yeah i mean if if there was one i'd pick this map yeah i, I think i would agree i think i love I mean, maybe people feel negatively about payback but i really like it i just think that like it's hard for me to say like, oh, Payback's S tier because like that would mean it like stands head and shoulders above all the other maps. And while I do think it's probably better than most, if not all maps in this game, I don't think it stands like so head and shoulders as like this amazing historic Call of Duty map. Like, mm-hmm. I know we said we're ranking them within like Black Ops Six, obviously, but that that stands for me. It's like if it's S tier, it better be like so incredible that it's like clearly better than all the other maps in the game. And I don't know that it's like that much better. So I think we should put it in an A but I'm open to discussion on it, obviously. No, I, 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 I'm down. I'm down for A. You're down for A? Yep. All right. Uh, then next, Brock, we got Protocol. That's a D. Yeah, it's definitely down towards the bottom. Yeah. That's, it's, just, it's just so big. There's like all these different rooms, like lower, you can go lower like, and stuff. I don't know. It's at, like, fir- at, at, at first, I thought I liked it cause when I first played it. I think it was like one of the first maps I played. But after yeah. like, I played a second time, I was like, nah, I don't really like this one. I feel like there's like pieces of it that could be a good map. Like, I feel like if like the bottom areas weren't a thing, like the top part of it might not be like the worst map. Yeah. But like, it's those like that, like the part that goes so much lower where it's like so it's like feels like I need a jetpack to be able to wall run and like go up. Yeah, it's like so much, yeah, so low and then like, yeah, compared to the top. Like, like I, I said, yeah. 
I guess we can talk about maybe putting it in like between D or F, but I, I definitely think it's uh it's definitely in in the D tier for sure, at least. It's not a very good map. I don't know if it's the worst map of the game, but it's definitely down there. It's it's definitely just those lower parts. If those lower parts didn't exist, I don't think the map would be like maybe like that bad, maybe be like a C tier. I don't really see competitive viability for this map also. Uh no. I was trying to think maybe like in a way search and destroy, but I don't see it. I don't really see it either. And those those low and high points and just like the map is also very big. Yeah. I mean, I, I guess I could see hard point, but it's still a huge map. Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's a very big map. Uh yeah. definitely other yeah. options better to choose from. <laughs> yeah. And especially if like potentially like raid and you know Hacienda and you know some of those other maps are potentially being brought back. Uh, mm-hmm. they'll probably trump some of these other maps. Obviously we don't want all throwback maps uh, like like last year, but if there aren't enough viable current maps, which is kind of sad to say. Uh you know, mm-hmm. you can throw that throw that in there. Skyline Brock is the next map. I think this is again one of the better maps in the game. Uh yeah. I think it's one of the better maps. I, I think you know, the pool side, it's a little bit weird how like the two, you know, like the two balconies kind of overlook each other. The pool is a little bit fluky with all that water. Obviously, Shark Sea might make an appearance. Oh, um, yeah. The like underground like hallway part isn't too bad. Obviously, you have like the upper part, like into that like top bedroom area. You got like the lower bedrooms. I think this is overall a pretty good map. I see it definitely being pretty competitively viable. This feels like a, a map that'll be in for sure for hard point and search potentially control depending on how like you know the spawns and the points work for it but i feel like you know we're obviously ranking these based on like how they play in pubs as well as like with competitive in mind like what they could be viable for i think skyline is i don't think i have it above payback because like i said payback's probably my favorite map but I, I think skyline is up there in a or b tier yeah um yeah i kind of agree with you I, I can see a world where it is probably all three game modes yeah i could definitely see it it's like the only thing I think is it might be a little small. The transition from point to point might be really easy because I feel like the points would be pretty close to each other. The map's pretty damn small. Yeah. It's like a point would probably be over by the pool, mm-hmm. and another point would probably be over on that other side around the wall by like that like kitchen and like whatever area. Yep. Which those points would be like crazy close. Like you could like transition to one in like three, four, five seconds, which is, is pretty crazy. So I don't know. It depends on where the points would be. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like checkmate and Cold War. Those points are kind of close together. That is true. Under the plane, then you could just like scurry on over to the other one, like right next to on that like long hallway. Yeah, so that is true. See. Um, um where, should put, where should we put this in what tier? Just looking at all the other maps, I'm almost thinking it could go in A because I do think it's a step above pretty much all the other maps, like behind Payback. I do think it's a pretty big step up over most of the other maps. Yeah. Let's put, let's put it A. Because then, Brock, Low Town. That map's. I, uh, I think that might be F. Yeah, just too much water everywhere. It is so huge, too, again. Zero competitive viability there. Yeah, it just. I, don't know, I, I, went, I went into. I put it yesterday. I went into like some area. Half the room was filled with water. I, I didn't know how to get out of it. I was confused. Yeah, it's like, and like in order to get around half the map, like you can't even like run on a lot of parts. You have to be like hopping on boats from like yeah. boat to boat to get across. You're like more focused on like jumping on a boat to boat to like getting across. There's just way too much water to get lost in that. It's just a RNG simulator. Like if you're playing search and you could just dive in the water and try to get lost. Like yeah. pubs wise, it's also not fun. Like all that like weird water makes things like super fluky and hard to just get a bunch of engagement. It's terrible for pubs, not competitively viable. I think it might be the worst map in the game. Yeah, it's definitely not good. Uh, now the next one's an interesting one, Brock. Subsonic. In terms of competitive viability, it's even worse technically than Low Town because Low Town's probably like technically big enough to like at least play. Subsonic's probably too small to even like consider playing. Yeah. In ranked, however, Subsonic, in my opinion, is an incredible pub map because, like we said, when you and I are playing pubs, we're just looking for a bunch of engagements, fast-paced maps. I mm-hmm. love Nuketown. Subsonic's a pretty damn good pubs map for that. Good. It is good for that. Get a lot of engagements. Oh, yeah. Easily. You get the cam- Camel Grand easier when you get that map. But it also, like, in terms of competitive viability, pretty much has none. I think that kind of 
know, lowers it a little bit. It's fun to play though. I feel like we're talking like a C tier here because of the balance of, you know, it's pretty fun for pubs. It's good for camels, but overall as a map, it's probably really not that great and it doesn't have a competitive viability. So I feel like it's like a B C tier. Uh, if I had a, mm, I think, I think it's a C tier. If we're going for, for a competitive com- compatibility too. Yeah. Well, my, I think we'll see tier for now. My uh, tier list glitched out here. Yeah. Subsonic and C tier was making me chuck rewind up there with it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I agree with C tier. No competitive viability, but overall for pubs, I like seeing it for the camel grind. Next one, Brock, is rewind. Uh, so this is an interesting one because so far of all the maps we've listed, so like Lowtown, I feel Lowtown and Subsonic, I feel pretty confident we're not going to see them in competitive rotation. Yep. For different reasons, but I don't think we'll see either of them. Protocol, I don't think we'll see it in there at all because I do think it's too big. Like the lower parts are weird. I could see like maybe a world where they, like you said, they like maybe throw search in or something. Like I wouldn't be completely shocked, but I'd be pretty surprised. Uh, and then I am pretty confident Payback and Skyline are going to be in for at least one, if not two, if not all three modes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rewind, I'm a little questioning on though. I don't love it as a pubs map. The middle street's yeah. kind of just like really open and like long. And then the other side of the map, like between the stores, is just so cluttered. Mm-hmm. And then you have like the little video store on the other side. And the other side is just another kind of like another open street. Like it's not the worst map. I do think we're going to see it in competitive. I think it's going to be a search and destroy map. I could see it potentially being a hard point map because it's pretty spread out. I could see control. I, I, I do think this, this map is going to end up in competitive. I could see control for sure because how, how big it is kind of in a way. It's like big, but also not like crazy. Where like you definitely can like play hard point on it. I feel like, yeah. But I'm, I'm I'm kind of with you on like it's a it's a all right. It's like a mid mid pub pubs map. Yeah, it's okay for pubs. It's not like the best. It's probably competitively viable. This is just definitely the definition of mid. It's in the middle. It's I think it's B or C. I'll defer to you. Uh, the mo- what we have left. I don't hate the map. I think we put a B for now. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm lower on it than you. I'm mainly in C, but I'm, I'm okay with putting a B because, like, I can see, like, you know, the competitive viability maybe bumps it above subsonic. Yeah. The next map, Rock, is Scud. I have uh, not played it yet, but you said it was uh, not good. Yeah. So I think we should put an F. It was in the beta. I know you were busy during the beta. You didn't really get to play. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't the beta. It's like they did fix a the head glitch that was like terrible on the like little satellite dish. But overall, it's just basically like an open desert. <laughs> uh, and it's just not, I don't know. It's just not very great. There's like a little lower cutouts, kind of just like confusing parts of the map. Pretty open overall. It's just kind of a mess. Honestly, though, it's so bad. But I honestly think it's like still a little step up from low tone. I might put it like in D. I think I might rather play it than protocol. That might be a hot take, but I think it's in D tier. Since, de- and since you haven't played it, I think I'll defer to you. Yeah, uh, it's it's not a good map. Don't get me wrong. For anybody listening, <laughs> I'm not guessing Scud. It's not a good map, but I still like when, when I see Scud, I want to back out. But I like. I mean, if we load into a like, if we're playing tonight, we load into a Scud. We'll have you try it. But like, yeah, low tunnel, Like if I see it, I'm like, can we just back out and search again? Like I don't want to play this. Yeah. So uh, what what you're kind of saying is basically we put it as for the clickbait. Yeah, that would be low down, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you imagine we put low town S tier and like too bad there's not like a raid on this game. We throw that in F, look like that. Yeah. Um product next map is a, a map that's themed to you. Red card soccer. You're a soccer player uh yep. in real life, but I don't think this map is your favorite. No, I I'm trying to think what I play. Mm, yeah, and I I would still play over protocol in Low Town and probably Scud, but I just don't. I don't really like it that much, to be honest. In terms of competitive, though, could you see us playing on it? Because I think I kind of like. Once again, do I think this is going to be like? An, I'm not saying I think any of these are going to be amazing or terrible competitive maps necessarily, but I could see us playing on Red Card. I feel like it's very big, but it, it reminds me a little bit of Moscow in a way from Cold yeah. War. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like the color scheme and just like the long, like long street on one side, on like the left side or right side, depending on what side you're spawning on. But it reminds me of Moscow with that street. 
Uh, there's like the middle area where there's like a long hallway, kind of like in Moscow. Uh, and then, you know, on the right side, it's like more elevated. You're like, can go inside the stadium and stuff. I don't think it's necessarily great, but I could see them making us play like search and destroy on it. It is very big though. Yeah. I'm, I could see search. Yeah. It's just, it's, not, two. it's, it's mid, know. low mid though. Yeah. I'll let you. I think it either goes above the two things in D or like in C tier. I'll I'll let you go for this one. I'm okay with either. Um, to, uh, I say we we can just put it. I'll put it D. Okay, I want to put it at the top of D though because I do think it's better than Scud and Protocol. Yeah, and there's Agreed. more competitive viability than those two probably. Yep. So Brock, the next one has zero competitive viability. It's Babylon. Uh huh. This no man. competitive viability. It's tiny. However, so for the camo cool. grind, it's incredible because you get so many engagements. Yep. The, I this, think it. What are you gonna say? I said this to be just screams like a B. You think? Because I mean, obviously, in terms of competitive viability, it's one of the worst. I was gonna say like it's kind of just like it's like subsonic in my mind. Like, yeah, it's not the greatest map. It's really good for pubs in the camo grind. It's definitely not gonna be in competitive. It's but it's fun to play in pubs. But the no competitive viability knocks down. I was going to say it just goes straight to C with Subsonic. I do see yeah. what you're saying. I do I see. I definitely it. prefer it in pubs over Rewind, though. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's hard because it's like it's, people need to know in the context of what we're saying. Because in terms of like actual map design and like how good the map is, like objectively, like Babylon's pretty bad. It's just like a small basic map with like a tower or like four staircases that go up into a room in the middle, two super short lanes, and it's just engagement farming. Yeah. So, like, in terms of competitive viability, it's obviously tiny, but it's, like, one of those maps where it's, like, I enjoy seeing it when I load into a pub because I know it's going to be a ton of engagements and help me for my camel grind. Mm -hmm. I think it goes in C because I think it's the same as Subsonic. Okay. I I would rather play Babylon than Rewind, that's for sure. I agree. I think it's maybe the competitive viability that's making Rewind go over it, or I'd be down to just slide Rewind down to C with it. Yeah, I'd slide Rewind down. Now I think about it more down for that you got rewind down in c next map up rock derelict i think that's how you say it. derelict i uh, think so <laughs> the containers on it a bit of a smaller map it is small but it's kind of cool all the all the colors and stuff yeah the color the one thing i will say you know there is a decent amount of color on these maps which is you know classic treyarch uh what do you think of derelict i so it was in the beta i didn't love it in the beta Early on when I was playing the you know the first few times in it, I wasn't a huge fan, but I will say it's a map that's growing on me a bit. Mm, every time I played it so far, I think I liked liked it pretty well. It's been consistently growing on me as well, I'll say. I don't uh, I, competitive viability though. I don't does know. it like is it is it too small or can we squeak by? I feel like in search and destroy you're gonna be on top of each other right away. It might not work. Could it be potentially like one of those hard point only maps? I feel like it could be like a small bow cage type, super mixy hard point. Yeah. I think it'd be a hard point in. Maybe not really. control. Because if you play search, you can literally just throw a nade across the map. and Yeah, that's, that's why I like. Fun. Search doesn't seem viable. Even hard point. Like, I, I'm not sure that it's even big enough to play hard point on. That's why it's like so weird. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? You know, bow cage was, was a small, small map and they play hard point. It's true. I don't know. I think this one is screaming B tier because I would rather play it than all the maps below it, but I think competitive viability I'm questioning a little bit and I'd rather play the two maps above it maybe. So I think it's going straight into B tier. Agreed. I think the gap was left open for it. Now the next map is Vorkuda. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Winter map. I'm usually a big fan. I'm a big fan of the winter map aesthetic. However, this map is just, I hate it. Some people, I, I was talking to somebody today, they like this map. Uh, and I was shocked because to me it's just not a good map. Yeah, it's not. It, that that big like saucer in the middle is just like, ugh. Yeah, it's like go go in the hole and like I don't know. It's and too you can, like, many glitch and like look on it. It's just like it's too big and bulky in the middle of the map. Like if that was taken out, that map if you could just like take that out, that map might not be the worst. Like replace it with like some just like rubble or something i don't know yeah it's like so much is going on and so much clutter and like objects everywhere yeah it's just not 
it's not a good map. I, I think it's D or F. I honestly would maybe be down to put it in F with Low Town. I hate it that much. I, I don't know why I just hate that map. I'm down. Which I want to like it because I like the winter aesthetic maps. Played it once and, you know, wasn't really a fan of it at all. Yeah. And then our next map, Brock, or our last map really of the, you know, the regular core maps is Vault. I definitely, I do believe as long as we're not playing with throwback maps, potentially, I think this one might be in competitive. I could see it being like a search and destroy map, even though it's a bit bigger. Uh, mm-hmm. I can see it being a search and destroy map. I feel like I can see it being, a, you know, a bigger hard point map. And I feel like this one will be a control. I think Vault will probably be in all three modes, if I had to guess. Yeah, agreed. Not a bad map. Not a bad, not great. I, I think this one belongs right next to Rewind. Yep. Because I'd rather agreed. play Derelict. I think it goes above that. But I, I think this map deserves to go B tier. Yep. Then Brock, I don't even know if I want to rank the last four maps. We can touch on them, but they're just they're just so different. Like they're not true. They're like knockoff free like, maps. shipment maps. <laughs> yeah, they're just like yeah they they call them like face off maps or whatever, and they're just like tiny, basically engagement farming maps. Um, so I don't necessarily know that I want to rank these because they're they're not the same thing. They're not the same thing as the maps that we just ranked. I mean, yeah. like Babylon is kind of close to it. It's like just like a slightly bigger version, but like. Sandhouse is like interesting. It's basically just Nuketown, but like maybe blown up and like a bunch of sand entered it. Yeah. It's like you still have the two, like you have like the bus is like elevated. You can go in it. You have still like the Nuketown sign. You have like the house that's like blown up and you can like barely go on the bottom, but you can go up top. It's basically just like a bad version of Nuketown, in my opinion. Yep. Uh, it's not very good. Stakeout is like amazing to get your camos. You can pull a knife out there and just like get like a million kills, but it's just like a tiny little like apartment that everybody's in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Gala map I actually haven't played, and then Pit is just like a mind shaft, just nightmare map. Yeah. So overall, I mean, those maps are terrible in terms of like a, a classic Call of Duty map, but they they have their purpose of just like getting a ton of engagements for for camel grinding, basically. Mm-hmm. If I had to rank these maps, though, I would I would have to go. I would definitely go Gala first. You play Gala. Yeah, I played it. We played I never it. played it. Yes. I never played it, so I'm not sure. Okay, it, there's a there's a top top mid like thing. It, it's like kind of OP at, at certain times, but it's not too too OP. Okay, that's the one I haven't played. I, I definitely like God is my favorite, and then definitely Sandhouse for me and then stake out. Yeah. Pit. See, I think Sandhouse kind of sucks, but I do think like in terms of actual like maps, you can actually like kind of move on it because it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, and a little more open space pit and stakeout, or especially stakeout, are just like so like stakeout, especially is so crammed. Yeah, you just like spawn up and like you you don't have a time to turn your character before you're dead. Yeah, like I tried to use a launcher in the map and it wasn't possible because like even if I shot like off spawn, I could barely get a shot off. It's like, yeah, it's crazy. But I yeah, Sandals isn't bad, but it's just like it's playing Sandals just makes me want Nuketown so bad, which the rumor is it might be coming this Friday. But like basically playing mm-hmm. Sandals makes me be like, damn, I want Nuketown. Yeah. And you want Nuketown, and Nuketown's just very good for camos. Yeah, so hopefully that comes out Friday. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the list, Brock. I, I just felt weird putting anything in S, because to me, putting something in S means it's like head and shoulders Yeah. above the other maps. And I don't think there's any map that stands out in this game to me that's like, yeah, that map is like awesome. Like I think like Payback and Skyline are good. I think Derelict isn't the worst. I could see Rewind and Vault being viable for competitive, but that's kind of where our troubles are coming right now for competitive, Brock, is... Like Skyline Payback, I think could definitely play all all modes. I could see Derelict working for Hardpoint for sure. I could see Rewind and Vault. Like we could find a way to make it work for all three modes. But like we're only sitting at five maps then for all three modes potentially that could work, and some of them don't even work for all three. So then we're having to like scrape out like, oh, do we have to play like a Scud Hardpoint, or like we're scraping out? Do we have to play a Red Card Search, or do we have to somehow play on Vorkuda Search? Like, yeah. We're kind of scraping together these like random maps because obviously we can't play the face off maps, but we're kind of just like scraping together random maps and like trying to figure out if we can play them. So that that is unfortunate for the competitive side of things because I definitely can see how there could be a lack of usable maps. Yeah, definitely agree. It sounds like they just need to uh, make some more maps uh, and they better better be good. <laughs> yeah, I wish they would release like a oh we're dropping season one with four new core maps and they were like some awesome competitive ones because. As much as I love the throwbacks and, you know, I love Raid as much as the next person that loves competitive and I, I like stand off and all these maps, like if it were up to me, like, yes, I want them to, you know, subsidize or, you know, help out the game with previous maps if needed and like they're fun for pubs and all that. But like, 
I would love them to just make banger original new maps because it's more interesting to watch the teams have to learn like a completely new map rather than play, you know, a recycled raid that we've played in, you know, a bunch so of many, before. so many years already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's entertaining though, because like, once again, raid is an incredible map, but like if I had the choice, I want to see brand new original maps that are awesome. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that we yeah. have any of those this year, unfortunately, but I, I do think I'm overall more positive than a lot of the community. Cause it seems like a lot of the community is like hating these maps big time. Yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, that is technically how the community goes, though. Even if they, even if they were amazing, which, like I said, and like you said, they're not amazing. But even if they were, I feel like the community would find a way to hate. Yeah, even if they were, they would find all these little things. Just hate on them still. Yeah, like I wish that the maps were actually incredible because obviously, a that'd be awesome if they were incredible. But b, I know for a fact people would still be like, "Well, this map sucks," and they'd pick out like one of the twelve. That isn't very good because there always is at least a few maps in every game. Like I remember BO3, I loved like every map, and then there was like the the Metro map and like uh Exodus, and those maps were just like so bad, but it was like every other map was so good, and it's like you just saw people just like complaining about those two specific maps, and it's like, were you just not gonna talk about the other eight incredible ones? Yeah. Like I, I even the- though I, I feel like those maps were like considered bad. I don't think they're even that bad. Just, that bad. I just think the those map the other maps were just that good. Yeah, and that's how we were in, like, a lot of the other CODs. Like, even in BO2, like, there are maps that I feel like are considered, like, not, you know, bad, not very good. But, like, if you actually go look in the grand scheme of things, I don't know if they were actually bad or if they were just the worst maps in their game full of great maps. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I have nothing else, though. Are you ready to wrap this one up? Uh, no, nothing else. Just, you know, excited to play some more Black Ops 6 and get the Camel Ground going still. Yeah, I'm excited to kind of get into the Camel Ground, too. I feel like I'm, like, partially in it, but I haven't really been able to sit down and just have, like, a super long session just playing, so I'm really excited to, you know, maybe this coming weekend or something to do that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. If you're on the audio platforms, drop a follow, drop a five-star review. We appreciate you guys watching. As always, I hope you guys are having fun on the Black Ops 6 grind, whether you're just, you know, playing casually, pubs are fun, whether you're camo grinding, whether you're one of those freaks that finished Dark Matter already. playing kickoffs or something. I haven't had a chance to play any competitive. It's usually takes a little bit and who knows this year. We may not play any, anything competitive because GB has gone. Uh, so we may not be able to play any like GBs or anything, but we might just go straight from the camel grind straight to ranked if it comes out early. But uh, I hope you guys are enjoying playing black ops six and we will see you in the next one.